So now that we covered the basics of a startup in the previous video, it's time to move on to some more complex stuff. In this video, I'll cover how to navigate using different onboard systems. There's quite a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get started. First though, we need to create a course for us to fly in the mission editor. And in in meantime, it's a good opportunity to show you a couple of special options that KA50 has. So if you move into our mission editor and let's spawn a KA50 and McCarran. KA50 client. And let's make it parking hot. Uh, take notice that uh, K50 can hold maximum up to six waypoints, so you need to be careful when you're planning for a mission or creating a waypoint. Um, in this mission, I'll probably create four to five waypoints. So let's go to Boulder City, let's cross about Hoover Dam, uh, and let's, let's make a third waypoint as a landing waypoint to Nellis. Okay, so now that we set up our waypoints, uh, there are a couple of special options that K50 has. So if you take a look at this here, it's called INU Fix Point, and your internal navigation unit will degrade over time, meaning it will become less and less accurate as, it, as you're flying. So uh, you generally want to have these um, along your flight plan. So let's say you can add this one here, or you can add one here, or you can just make uh, one random over a really specific area that it's really seen, like a mountain or, a, I don't know, something that you can visually see, acquire with your eye. And as you, as your flying across this flight plan, uh, when you're about to reach this uh, point, you just select it on your Abris and you can choose between two methods of how to fix your nav system. And when you fly over it, you are basically fixing your INU system. Now that that's covered, uh, there's also a couple of other options which are really useful. For example, uh, navigation and target points. So let's say you want to uh, pre-plan attack and you want to select a target that's visible on a specific point or you generally want to have an area where you want to look at. It doesn't have to be a target. It, you, it can be like a point of interest where you want to see with your sensors. It's really cool. You, you can use your PVI to slew your sensor directly to that point. So, I don't know, look for just for kicks, let's put one on... Uh, on Hoover Dam, and the second one, well, let's put it here. And now that we've done that, we can launch our mission. Before we take off, I'd like to point some things out. So, for navigation, K50 user can use like three to four systems. It can use Abris, PVI, and it can use ADF, which is Automatic Direction Finder, to find non-directional beacons, usually on airfields and stuff. And you can see them on the Abris and fly towards them. And um, for this specific tutorial, I'm going to use a PV, uh, PVI and Abris. Now, these two systems, they're not linked together. They're, they work separately. But if you plan a mission in, inside a mission editor, the data will be copied on both of them. So you can follow the data on the Abris and on PVI. So let's say I am, I'm going to cover this uh, uh, Abris in another video because it's a pretty lengthy topic. And um, it's better to master navigation first than to do this. So, But for now, let's just open our map. So click Nav map and we can scale it up or down and as we as you can see this is our flight plan that we just entered in our mission editor so let's keep the map like this let's talk about pvi a bit so the main thing about pvi it it has to work it has to be in an operational mode if it's not in operational mode it means that you cannot select your waypoints you cannot select your airfields, targets, 
and only thing that you can do uh, uh, if it's on edit you can edit waypoints and you can create new waypoints uh, but you want to have it in operation mode if you want to use it uh, we have a couple of different modes here uh, we can uh, click nav waypoint and select our waypoints uh, by pressing the corresponding keys uh, we can also click our uh, fix point and select our fix point that we just added in the in the mission editor uh, we can also select airfields now airfields uh, it's kind of special uh, airfield 1 will always always be the airfield that you started from and airfield 2 is is the airfield that um, you selected to be uh, as a landing waypoint uh, you can you can add this if you add the coordinates to your landing waypoint you can select it manually and fly towards it uh, navigational target is the is another one of those special options that we did in the mission editor and uh, we added I think uh, two targets that, so we can select two targets and if you want to create a target we would just simply put this to edit and make it number three and then start inputting inputting the coordinates and if you want to input the coordinates of a of a waypoint or uh, anything that's uh, interesting you can use the F10 map and look at the upper left corner and you can see the latitude and longitude coordinates and since this is west here uh, in 1.5 in Caucasus map you will always have positive coordinates because you're on right hemisphere of the of the map but since we're in Nevada uh, we have we are on the left hemisphere. We have to we have to use west instead of east, and to and when you use west instead of east, you have to add a negative symbol before the coordinates. So let's make an example here. I want to create a target waypoint. I don't know. Let's add it here. The coordinates are three six one eight nine one. So positive, which is zero, and then what was it again? Three six one nine, three six one nine nine, and now you have to uh, choose either negative or positive again. One is negative and zero is positive. And since we're inputting west, and west is on left hemisphere, so we have to add a negative before. We we're going to press one. Uh, we're going to press one to add a negative here. And now we're going to input the west coordinates, which are one one five zero eight. Eight five, so one one five zero five eight, and when we press enter, we have just created our third target. So if we go into our operational mode and click nav and three, we see the coordinates, and now we can fly towards it. And if we unlock our Schwarz, our Schwarz sensor right now, sorry for butchering that pronunciation. But if we uh, uncage it right now, it will point directly towards this coordinates, which is really useful. But for now, let's stick to our waypoint number one. Okay. Let's get this bird into the air. Let's activate bank, pitch, and heading hold. For now, okay, so if we want to fly K fifty, we can easily fly it uh, just by holding a joystick and trimming it right and hoping that you get a trim just right to so it doesn't bank left or right but generally when you if you're not using the flight director mode which is that button right there uh, you won't really have much problems because it's you uh, when you're flying normally like this autopilot has about 20% control so even if you trim it uh, sort of out of the way it will hold its um, direction really well because since our heading autopilot is engaged and this represents what heading we want to go in so let's put our altitude hold right now 
And one more interesting fact about altitude hold is if you see this lever here uh, on the throttle, you can't really press it with your mouse, but you can press it with a keybind. It's it's called uh, collective brake uh, altitude uh, select lever, something like that in the options. And if if you hold that button and move the collective up or down uh, that means that whenever you're using the autopilot altitude hold you're not fighting the aircraft so if you press and hold the button and change altitude and you're satisfied with the altitude you, you want you, you want to use you just release the brake and you w that's your new altitude you don't you don't have to fight the autopilot all the time as he will try to go back to original altitude that you were you were there, so you know that's a cool little fact that I don't think a lot of people know, but it's still cool nonetheless. So let's move into our. Uh, let's say we deviated from our plan right now because we didn't, uh, we didn't, we didn't, think, we didn't keep uh, keep track of our flight route or whatever. Uh, and we're kind of busy now, and we don't know wanna. Uh, we want to use autopilot. Now, autopilot has a couple of options. Uh, if you look at this switch right here, uh, it has descent mode and root mode. Uh, root mode is basically it wants to fly. It wants to fly towards a certain waypoint, or it wants to fly uh, along your flight flight plan. If you take a look at this switch right here, and it's called autopilot desired heading, desired track. So it can be in desired heading. If it's in desired heading, that means it's, it, it wants to go directly to a target, to an airfield, to a waypoint, or anything like that. If it's in the desired track, it will try to follow your flight plan as close as it, as it can, uh, while at the same time going towards the waypoint. So if we had a waypoint, for example, right here, it will try to go uh, here to get to that waypoint. But for now, let's put it into desired uh, heading. If we put it into desired heading and turn on our uh, autopilot engage root mode, uh, which can't be clicked, it had to be key binded, we are now on autopilot as it's stated in the lower left corner. And I'm not touching the stick right now, and the uh, aircraft is turning by itself. And this is going towards directly towards our first waypoint as you can see right here if we put it into desired track mode it will try to come back to this blue line and then try to go to the airfield uh, to the waypoint so if you do this it's gonna it's gonna move a little bit to the, uh, to the right to get back to our flight plan if it's um, if you're more off to the if you're offset more uh, from the, your flight plan it will be more aggressive but if you're close to your flight plan, it won't really do much. So as we're flying along now, uh, let's see if there is any other things that I wanted to say. Let's go over this um, PVI panel. Now we covered the first few four buttons. Uh, these these obviously are your self coordinates. Uh, these ones give you. Co uh, ETA on the waypoint. For example, here we see I'm going to come to for about two minutes. I think this is. Um, I'm going to reach my waypoint in about two minutes. Uh, this is this gives the wind co wind information. Uh, this is true true heading. Blah blah blah. Uh, these two buttons right here. Uh, it's called INU INU precision and INU norm. Uh, these two buttons are used to align the system. If you press uh, INU precision, it will take 30 minutes to align the INU system, and that's hell of time. And um, you don't generally want to wait that long. Uh, if you, whenever you flip these two switches up, uh, when you're starting the K50, your INU will automatically start uh, start aligning by itself. So you don't have to worry about aligning the aircraft and stuff like that. Now, why is my autopilot disengaged? That's odd. I must have pressed the uh, autopilot reset. Oh well, it's back on track now.
So as we're closing to the waypoint one, we can also see our fixed nav point point here, and we can see our. Uh, you can't really see it, but it's there. It's our first target point and the second target point. So what what can we do? We have a couple of options. So if we select, um, well, I can do whatever I want now. If I want to fly towards an airfield that I just started, I can just press airfield and number one. And that will turn the aircraft towards our starting location, McCarran. And as you can see, the aircraft is just flying normally without me doing anything. And our speed is, we're, real, we're going really fast. This is uh, right, uh, right before the speed limit for this aircraft. And this is pretty cool. But, yeah, now that we covered the basics of flying with autopilot, uh, let's, let's see what we can do with the target points. As we're turning right now, if we switch to our target points, navigation will target, and let's go to the target number one. And our target number one, we set it up over Hoover Dam. So, aircraft is starting to fly towards the Hoover Dam because there's our target. It's our target point. Okay, it's turning. We can also make our flight plans with Abris as well. But whenever you make a flight plan on Abris or make a new waypoint on a Abris, you also have to create it here. As I said, these two are separate, so they don't work together. And whenever you make like a plan here, you have to make a plan there. It's just kind of annoying, but you don't have have to follow it religiously. can see the, the target to be selected is flashing on the map so if for example I'm uh, if I unlock my spawn sensor right now it will point to, towards the Hoover Dam and not in front of my target uh, let me demonstrate if I deselect here uh, and press unlock it will point towards here and you know you can move it and stuff but if I select my first target and unlock my shawl sensor, it will automatically point towards the target that we set. And this is the Hoover Dam, if you're not knowing, there's like the bridge part. Yeah, there's the bridge. And that's pretty cool for planning the, uh, planning the attack. Um, it only works with the nav target uh, for PVI. Uh, this is the data link panel that we are, we're going to touch in the future. And you can manually store data here that will be connected to the Abris and you can recall the data whatever you want and just by just like this if we unlock the spot sensor while having that target selected we also can get the data back instantly and just to demonstrate we're gonna put the second point the aircraft will start turning around this is where our second second target probably is so if we reset our shaw sensor and unlock it again, it will start pointing towards that direction. And yeah, as you can see, uh, the map is, you know, if you don't get close enough, the laser can't really detect the correct distance. So you're going to have to be careful about that. Also, Nevada is kind of iffy. Uh, I know there's a few issues with... Um, Whenever you input coordinates in Nevada, uh, they're slightly off. I, I read somewhere that it might be because of the uh, PVI it doesn't have any elevation data uh, inputted here, so it's kind of offsetting the code, offsetting the waypoint you create. But it's not a big deal. It's usually really close by, and you can just find it really easily. While it, while we're at the sensors, there's uh, this useful feature 
uh, it's called Schwarz scan rate, scan rate, and you can move this knob up and down, and it will increase the scanning rate, rate of the Schwarz antenna. But it will not increase the uh, it will not increase the sh uh, moving it like this. Uh, I personally have a mod that I changed uh, how um, what's the rate of uh, slow in the sensor because it was just a really slow. I couldn't handle it and I had to accelerate it just to add that. Uh, but this switch right here, if you press, if you for example press uh, unlock the Schwal sensor and uh, unlock the Schwal, wait one second, unlock the Schwal sensor and unlock it again, it will start moving left and right. So this knob right here controls how fast uh, do we control the center. Yeah, as you can see, it's really slow now. And if I crank it up all the way, it moves left and right, left and right like crazy. Now that we got that covered, let's go out of our autopilot mode and show the flight director mode. Uh, flight director mode is pretty useful stuff. Uh, as you can, as you've seen before, the the autopilot uh, tends to control where you're going. Where you're going, like uh, it, it usually controls uh, which direction you're flying. So if you, if I were to turn left right now, in this exact moment, and if I if I if I were to release the stick, the, the aircraft will want to go to that previous position because when I trim the aircraft. I trimmed it towards this setting right here, and it will slowly come back to that. Uh, it's a default setting for the trimmer. And sometimes, oh, it's really hard to trim the aircraft because of this exact issue. Whenever you try to trim, it will just mess up. So, if you want to uh, alleviate this problem, the best way you can do it is instead of pressing the trim key once. You just press it, you press and hold the trim button as I'm doing right now. I'm holding the trim button, so the aircraft doesn't want to move towards that point that I previously set. Uh, only until I release it, it, it will set my new course. So if I release the trim button right now, it will it will go towards that that heading. And uh, let's put this into neutral because I'm going to showcase that too. Uh, let's say you want to, I don't know, you're doing, you, you need to do something really quickly and you don't want to crash. And if you move this switch into a neutral position, which is not either direct heading or direct track, uh, just into neutral, you will enter like a semi altitude hold if you have this selected. And let's engage the root mode. And now that we've done that, the aircraft will keep the altitude, keep the speed, keep the bank, and keep the pitch. So it's basically just flying in a straight line, not doing anything. You don't have to worry about anything. You can just focus on uh, creating the waypoints, uh, or checking the data links, or what whatnot. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, that's a pretty cool feature as well. So back to the, our original point, which is uh, the flight director, uh, flight director mode. So as we can see, if we try to trim, um, flight director mode is somewhat similar as if you're holding the trim, but it's quite, it's just the similarity ends there. Uh, if I were to enable the flight trim now, uh, I would get a couple of new things on the HUD. First things first, my control is less burdened by the autopilot. The, the dampening is still there, that autopilot... Um, gives you but it's not as severe you have more freedom to control your aircraft when your uh, aircraft won't suddenly go back to original heading that you had before you trim but in this mode this is this mode is usually used if you don't want to use the root mode because it tells you where you want to go when you're flying towards the waypoint so if I sell if I have for example I don't know uh, airfield 2 selected that's Nellis and if I set trim, this will tell me what I need to do. You generally want to have uh, the aircraft water marker between these two things. So if I if I if I'm if I trim it like this, if I want to keep going that heading, I need to put 
the watermark right here. And it's basically telling you what you need to do with your aircraft to follow the certain trim that you've set or a certain waypoint that you set. And for example, it's telling me I need to increase the collective. And there we go. It's a really cool feature if you want to have more freedom. Uh, it's not really special about it. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, you know, hit a button and you have more freedom on flying your helicopter instead of taking over, being taken over by a helicopter. It's useful for when you like combat, uh, in combat and you want to maneuver slightly better. And now that that's done, I'm gonna engage my autopilot to to land. I'm gonna demonstrate a hover and how to land with the hover. Now we are approaching the Nellis airfield and let's go and land. First things first, let's disable our Android autopilot and just in case, leave it in neutral position so we don't mess things up. And uh, let's engage our flight mode just to have more freedom before we start to go and hover The good thing about the K50 is it doesn't need a lot of rudder input since it has a counter rotating rotor blades and it counteracts the torque. It leaves you much freedom to do stuff. Alright, when we're doing the landings, you have to be careful about the vortex state. If you get into a vortex state, you're screwed. And the best way to avoid it is if you look at this. Uh, gauge right here it tells you your climb or descent rate never go below never go above five meters per second descent rate always be always be inside that green zone if you want to live that is okay so we tr we trim the aircraft just so you can easily enter the hover mode as we're slowing down we're going to disable the flight mode director flight director mode and when we're below maybe 15 to 10 kilometers an hour we're gonna enter hover mode and here we go we enter the hover mode and if you take a look at this right here on the HSI these two lines represent how far you are off from your hover and it only activates when you're in hover mode it also is displayed on the HUD and as you can see right now we're holding a really nice cover. So what do we do now? Well, we have our autopilot altitude, altitude hold and if we want to lower the altitude we can just use the co uh, collective brake and lower our collective. But there is also one more way. Uh, if you recall before I said that this switch right here is in root mode and auto descent mode. So descent mode is only available when you're in hover mode. And and descent mode will lower the aircraft with 2 meters per second. And it will stop uh, 4 meters above the ground. So you can hold that key and it will never hit the ground. It will deliver you just before the ground. So if we, I don't know, um, I'm going to hold the trim key and move the aircraft so it doesn't try to get me back into that original hover position and I'm gonna position myself for a nice landing there we go releasing the trim key and it will get me back into hover mode in case you didn't know that that's a pretty useful trick if you wanna move from hover to hover you just hold the trim 
Let's deploy our gears. Let's go towards this position right here. Heading. Okay. So, if we hold the descent button right now, we will start this descent relatively fast. I mean, it's two meters per second. It's pretty safe. And if I keep holding this button, it will automatically stop. There we go. And it automatic. And I release the key, key right now, and I exit the hover mode, and I slowly decrease the collective. And there we go. We made a really easy landing. Be it they can be aligned more properly. Uh, that's good enough. It's also useful if you want to hold cargo. You just enter the hover mode like this, pick up the cargo, hold it wherever you want, and then, bam, you're done. And, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope I covered everything and I didn't forget and I think it's kind of overwhelming when you do everything in one take. So, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. See you in the next video.